you're already selling in about uh, 160 cities. Is there a plan to invest in increasing touch points and availability through both showrooms and online platforms? The simple answer to your question is that for the next quarter, uh, the goal we have before us is to at least triple our reach from where it is, as correctly stated by you, and to try and double our volume again. So to put it simply, um, we wanted to first cross the threshold of 10,000 chetaks a month, which we finally did successfully over the last few months. Uh, our sites are set quite clearly now on doubling that to 20,000 plus chetaks uh, uh, a month. Um, I, I don't know whether we'll be able to achieve it immediately within the next quarter, but I would certainly like to believe that uh, by tripling reach uh, in the next quarter, uh, at least our exit out of the quarter should be at that rate. So uh, triple the reach, double the volume next quarter. This is what uh, you know uh, we have set our sights on. All right, so ambitious plans there. Coming back to the E3 wheeler market. Now, this was a segment you entered in November last year. How are you looking to grow sales here and take on competitors like uh, the Mahindra Group? Our goal for the next quarter uh, is the same as with Chetak, that we must double this volume from here. So hopefully, uh, you know, from 2,000 uh, per month or thereabouts of the e-auto and cargo put together, uh, we should be looking at something like three and a half, four, four and a half thousand uh, a month, the next quarter, domestic sales. The biggest car makers have cut down on EV sales targets, production targets, timelines, because there is a slowdown, especially in countries which, is, which have pulled uh, back subsidies. What is your view on how this should be seen in India? And are you seeing any sort of a impact in uh, electric two-wheeler demand? Well, if I may say so, Parikshit, this is exactly what uh, we, as in, uh, uh, you know, Siam, and, and the major players, uh, uh, Indian players, have been uh, pointing out for several years now, uh, I think the first occasion was 2019, that you can't keep um, uh, driving growth uh, and, if I may say so, distorting and driving growth uh, basis subsidies or SOPs or crutches of any kind. Uh, so I was never part of the you know, EV cheerleaders uh, who, to me, were you know more like White pipers leading the rats over the cliff. Uh, and that's what's happened in, in many instances uh, where the voice of reason has been ignored uh, by both governments and associations in their desire to be populist and to be seen to be green, uh, you know, uh, without uh, considering whether this kind of sustainability itself is fundamentally sustainable. Our focus has always been on getting the technology right, the consumer experience right, and at the risk of being called regressive by some, if I may say so, uh, you know, we thought that we, we need to be responsible because let's face it, uh, we are not uh, a, a startup or an upstart that is going to, you know, do an IPO down the line and jump ship sometime as we are seeing happening in, uh, in various industries. Uh, having said that, Parikshit, I will also say this. I'm not a naysayer, uh, you know, uh, uh, and, and the effort that we have put into the Chetak and the three-wheeler uh, speaks for itself. So I believe that electric will be there because society will want electric to exist. Now, it may well be, as you are implying, perhaps, that with cars, something like a hybrid may be, uh, you know, a more pragmatic solution, at least in the near term. Uh, and I think... I, I would subscribe to that view, but with smaller, lighter vehicles like two-wheelers or with three-wheelers that typically ply 100, 200 kilometers a day, I think electric is a very strong solution. And for now, we are single-mindedly pursuing this solution. I would also like to ask you about the big news in the automobile sector with regard to Tata Motors. They have announced a demerger of their passenger vehicle and the commercial vehicle business. Many say that uh, this is a logical step to the subsidization they had carried out in 2022. Uh, how do you see this as important for the automobile industry, for a company like Bajaj Auto? You have often spoken about the need to have the electric vehicle business functioning separately. Well, uh, I would say, if you see what we have done uh, with the Chetak, uh, we have a electric-only brand in Chetak. 15 years ago, Chetak was an ICE product. Then there was no Chetak for 15 years. Uh, so today, it is exclusively an electric product. Uh, we don't also make 
a petrol chetak, for example. Uh, secondly, uh, the the product, uh, you know, uh, is, is an all electric product like any other EV product in the marketplace. Thirdly, within um, Bajaj Auto, the entire uh, business unit of the vertical that deals with Chetak deals only with Chetak. So my colleague Eric and his team that report into Rakesh, you know, uh, that's all they do. So it's like a company within a company, so to speak. And finally, I uh, already referred to that a couple of times that we have built an entirely independent network or we are in the process of building an entirely independent network for Chetak. Um, uh, it will take us some time, but eventually there will be you know, five, seven hundred Chetak dealers uh, all over the country. So we have also in that sense demerged, but I would say we haven't done it in a corporate or legal or technical sense that perhaps Tata has uh, announced uh, uh, yesterday. Uh, we have done it more in a business marketing strategic sense, if I may say so, in an artistic sense that we have carved it out uh, within, within the existing business. And I think this makes sense uh, for us, at least for now, uh, for the fundamental reason, uh, or two reasons, you know, one is the Tata business or a Mahindra business is a very capex intensive business, you know, the car business. Uh, I have always said that our business is more like a FMCG business. It is not a capex intensive business, but it's a very scale sensitive business. Although in the last two or three years, I received many proposals uh, uh, from time to time to, you know, uh, carve it out separately and uh, uh, raise money, etc. And I've said this to you before that, uh, you know, just because there's some free money floating around for a while, um, you know, it doesn't mean you go and uh, and burn it. Uh, in fact, you have to be more responsible uh, when when it's somebody else's money than, than your own. Uh, so uh, how do I uh, raise money on the one hand? And on the other hand, say to you, we are going to do a buyback at 12,000 rupees. I mean, it's a contradictory statement, right? So the solution for Tata is different uh, in short because their business model is different. The solution uh, or what is right for Bajaj uh, is different and we have to do what's right for Bajaj. Right, uh, my final question, sir. Uh, we are looking at a situation where the fame subsidies may not exist after a two year period. Uh, is that a worry for the company and will that impact how you deploy CapEx and uh, your production rollouts as well? Well, most of our capex, uh, about a thousand crore plus for next year, will go into uh, EVs and other similar new energy vehicles. Um, uh, it will go a lot into the 125cc plus motorcycles and Chetak, which are our area of focus, and into the new markets. Uh, we want to go to an export, uh, uh, you know, such as Brazil, that we started up with some success, some initial success, and we want to take take that forward. Um, in terms of, you know, what happens uh, post fame, etc., our business plans never rest uh, on, on any incentives, any subsidies from the government. I mean, we built such a, a large export business. We didn't do it on the back of incentives. Incentives are welcome. Uh, you know, very quickly, I can add that we missed 40 years the boat with the 100cc motorcycle. Um, and in this market, we have still not been able to recover from that loss. So our mantra is very clear, the cost of being late far, far exceeds the cost of being wrong. So even if electric turns out to be the wrong thing to do in the long term, we will stay with it for now because we can afford to be wrong, we can't afford to be late. All right, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Bajaj, for joining us, giving us your view on what's driving the growth for Bajaj Auto, the outlook for the next quarter, and uh, how you see the industry functioning in a scenario where subsidies go down and uh, possibly maybe called off after a two to three year period. Thanks once again for being with us.